Few brands make an entrance as bold as this. Pulling up in a Rolls Royce tells the world you have arrived. And now one can deliver you practically anywhere. The Cullinan, named after the world's largest diamond, is the Mark's first SUV and its first vehicle with all-wheel drive. The brand might be owned by BMW, but this big boy glides over rough terrain using the exclusive aluminum-intensive architecture of luxury, the same one that's under Phantom. Prices begin at $325,000. As equipped here, it's four hundred and ten dollars In case you're trying to decide between this and a Jeep Wrangler. Something I didn't expect. In 2018, the best-selling Rolls-Royce was the Dawn. That's the convertible. In 2019, Cullinan is fully expected to take the top slot because everybody's buying SUVs and crossovers. Even the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. <laughs> Consider the formal upright appearance of the Ghost and Phantom for a moment, and Cullinan makes perfect sense. The SUV silhouette is a very good look for this brand. Typically, sport utes are two box designs, meaning one for the engine and a second for passenger and cargo space. This being a roller, it offers more, a three box design, though the small trunk-like flourish is subtle. The back doors open coach style because the common name for rear hinged doors is <laughs> rather unpleasant. There is a model that has a fixed glass panel here that separates the cargo area from the passenger compartment. That's for owners who prefer to be chauffeured, but uh, Rolls-Royce says most Cullinan owners want to drive their vehicles. It's too bad because it's really comfortable and roomy back here. Even the tallest glampers will have room to stretch out. The small drive shaft tunnel means three pair of hiking boots will have plenty of space to kick around in. Nearly all Rolls-Royce vehicles are bespoke. Buyers can indulge themselves with a champagne cooler if celebrating on a regular basis is a thing. This is far from roughing it. With toasty seating and dual zone climate, even the vents and seat tracks are top shelf hardware. Uh, my only gripe, I only found the new style USB-C ports, something new cords would rectify, I suppose. There are plenty of entertainment options to take your mind off business. As expected, there's overkill happening back here. Cullinan gets the same motivation as Phantom, a 6.75-liter twin-turbo Rolls-Royce V12, 563 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque have never been so refined. Until this vehicle gets electrified, I can't see it being any more silky. A reminder that Rolls-Royce does not use a tachometer. The spirit of ecstasy gets some meaningful company at the end of that nose. Controlling an 8-speed transmission is a stock that's too close to the windshield wipers for my liking. And finally, all four wheels get power because, well, this is an SUV. This is not an off-the-shelf BMW all-wheel drive system. The gears and drive shaft are different. Now, Rolls-Royce understands very few Cullinans are actually going to go off-road. But if an owner decides they want to, Rolls has made it effortless, as they do. It's a one-button operation. Okay, two if you're going to use hill descent control. The air suspension lowers and raises the car about an inch and a half for either loading people in cargo or attacking snow drifts and sand dunes. There's some fine tuning to be done if you want, but it's pretty much an automatic system. So let me set the scene here for you. Um, I'm looking onto a hood that's as long as an aircraft carrier. This thing rides so high that if I jumped out, the fall might kill me and it weighs some 6,000 pounds. Good thing that I've got a turbo V12 under the hood. It launches with the authority of Queen Elizabeth. Now, uh, zero to 60 might be uh, about five to six seconds. But this is an entirely new experience. The thrust and the weight combined, it's really hard to describe. Regal is the only way to put it. Punching the V12 to watch the power reserve gauge fluctuate is a very unique Rolls-Royce experience. Okay, weighing three tons and riding as high as Cullinan does, you would expect that it handles like a water buffalo. Not that I know what a water buffalo handles like, but while it is soft and comfortable and there is some body roll, it's remarkably composed. 
And at the end of the day, Cullinan has to be good because it's not the only super premium sport ute on the market. Bentley Bentega, Lamborghini Urus, and Land Rover Range Rover Autobiography are all jockeying for spare trust fund money. The magic carpet ride of the Cullinan is a strong argument to go with this refined Leviathan. To achieve the remarkable ride of this car, there are cameras that read the road ahead and then tell the suspension what to anticipate. I'd say that it's buttery smooth, but I don't know that I've had butter this creamy. Cullinan comes standard with all-wheel steering. Uh, watch closely. Here's a reference graphic so it's easier to discern. It makes it much easier to navigate the REI parking lot to pick up, uh, I don't know, a mink sleeping bag? Uh, no, fur's not cool. How about some Jimmy Choo hiking boots? I did some light off-roading. Uh, face it, not many Toyota Land Cruisers or Mercedes G-Wagons even see duty like this. The air suspension can force wheels without traction down to the ground for better bite, and the turning radius of 43.4 feet is over a foot shorter than the Mercedes, so owners are less likely to scrape the wheels. I don't want that to happen. Uh, time to get back to the natural Rolls-Royce habitat. Okay, uh, let's kill the music. Now listen. Hear that? Of course you don't. This car is remarkably quiet. Okay, let's start the music up again. <laughs> Appropriate tune. My guess is that Cullinan is hushed right up to its top speed of 155 miles an hour. Can you imagine the wind resistance? The grill slats are active, and while I'm pretty sure that owners aren't concerned in the least about fuel economy, the EPA estimate average is 14 miles per gallon, and yes, premium fuel is specified. Uh, that's a couple less than a Ford F-150 Raptor. I just thought I'd throw that info McNugget in there. The good folks at Goodwood have crafted a sanctuary to view both town and country. The leather? Perfect. Wood? <laughs> That's not veneer. It's not shiny paint over plastic either. This is all metal and chrome, heft and substance. With mass-produced products dominating our lives, few of us experience hardware this substantial anywhere, let alone a car. And the scent inside is lovely, but difficult to describe, like the suite of a five-star hotel. The doors on the Cullinan open very wide, so wide in fact, it's a bit of an abdominal workout to reach the door pull, feel the burn, uh, or you can just do it the Rolls Royce way. Nice. Also works on the passenger side too. Of course it does. The only clue to BMW involvement is the user interface that goes heavy on the iDrive experience. At least the graphics are different. There are many ways to work with it, though no gesture control. Uh, looking for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay? Those are among the very few things that Rolls doesn't offer. It's pretty well known that Rolls Royces have umbrellas built into the doors. You may not know that we in Seattle hate using them. It's a sign of weakness, though. This being a Rolls umbrella, we might make an exception. It's hard to find fault with a vehicle like this, other than I can't afford one. It is odd that the climate control has no temperature gauge. I suppose you'll know if you're hot or cold. Considering the hardware-intensive cabin, an LCD gauge cluster seems out of place. And while it's a big rig, storage nooks are on the average side. These gripes will not stop anyone with the funds from buying a Cullinan, or two of them. If you were wondering if I would do this test, of course I'm going to do this test. It's especially fun with the rolls. I even have uh, British weather. The small gate keeps individual rolls from rolling out the back, no pun intended. Rolls-Royce calls the rear doors the clasp, and it's the first hatch ever for the brand. Even the security shade has the heft of London Bridge and can be easily removed in case you're schlepping home a small Rodan. To do that, you would have to drop the seat backs, and the engineers have made that effortless. I'll point out that on many vehicles, the front seats need to be slid forward so the rear ones can fold flat without being blocked 
locked. Now watch as these do a little hitch in the movement. They're adjusting automatically to clear the front seats, so you don't have to run around to move them. Your CRV doesn't do that. And the floor will raise to get rid of this lip, so your new sculpture won't hang up there while loading. This part of the clasp can get in the way. Uh, no matter how big your mansion is, I'm pretty sure Cullinan can haul enough of this stuff to keep it well stocked for over a year, even if you entertain often. That's nine packs. A warning, buy one of these, and if you're not a celebrity, the status will be thrust upon you. I can't remember the last time I drove a vehicle that attracted so many people and cell phone cameras. <laughs> this takes the cake. <laughs> these days, it seems a groan ripples through the automotive enthusiast crowd when a new SUV is announced. There are some people that feel some brands shouldn't have them. To be honest, I think it's a shame Rolls-Royce didn't bring Cullinan to market years ago. It's a perfect addition to a rich lineup. Not many will see a dirt road, but that can be said about your neighbor's Explorer too. Cullinan lives up to its name. It's a gem. I mentioned that most Rolls-Royce vehicles are bespoke. Buyers can get recreation modules for the boot that fit into a motorized drawer. You can keep a bunch of these modules in your 12-car garage, one each for fly fishing, photography, rock climbing. There's even a tailgate seating module for watching the kids' soccer game. <laughs> Talk about one-upping the Joneses there. Cullinan is based on the same architecture of luxury as Phantom, but the sedan remains the flagship and is the only one to have the gallery, which is a portion of the dashboard where owners can have, uh, I don't know, a small Picasso installed or a Mondrian. I would do that if I had the means. One last observation, the floor mats in the Cullinan are impressively thick and rich sheepskin, but man, do these things trap dirt. I tried desperately to try to get them clean for photography and never really did. I guess that's a job for the help. Thought I'd let you know in case you were buying a set for your Civic. It is fun to dream, isn't it? So now, before I go, let me just say this. I'm not the kind of guy that gushes over super expensive cars. What I really admire is when engineers can take an affordable car and make it desirable. That is a bit of a black art. But this, the Cullinan, this is an amazing vehicle, and it's my favorite Rolls-Royce now. Uh, if I were to buy one, this is what I would buy. Uh, if you get the chance to drive one, or even just ride in it, don't pass it up, okay? That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.